Pisces Rising October 2022 shows huge travel plans that you look like you are making some plans to go on the trip of your life and also having success in your financial world. If you're excited to see what's coming up for you this October 2022, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm an astrologer, and in this video, I'm using the tropical zodiac within whole sign houses as I practice mainly Hellenistic Greek astrology. So in the background of this entire month is the Saturn Uranus square between your 12th and 3rd houses. So you're trying to get a really good handle on your mental health. You're doing the practices, you're being diligent, you're being rigid about what supports your mental and spiritual health. But Uranus in your 3rd house shows that your day-to-day -day life and routine are unstable as could your work and what that demands of you, making it difficult to keep a handle on the stability of your mental health. And we open the month on the 1st to the 3rd with Mercury in your 7th house opposed Neptune in your first house. So there's someone you're trying to communicate with that is a close partner, someone you're dating, married to, or a close friend, and you are not being clear, so it's inhibiting the communication. So watch out for being unclear or deceptive with someone that's trying to be clear with you, or maybe you're scared and you're not truthful because of just not wanting things to come out. But on the first, Venus in your eighth house is opposing Jupiter in your second house, which is really great for finances. This shows money coming your way through investments that's helping your income. Come. So it looks like like really, really great financially at the beginning of this month. And on the second, Mercury is stationing direct in your seventh house. So Mercury retrograding your seventh house has been difficult around a close relationship, communicating with a partner or being direct and assertive with conversation in this person. And with Mercury stationing direct, it shows that for the rest of this month, that's going to improve and communication is going to get much easier. From the sixth to the seventh, Mercury is also trying Pluto in your Capricorn 11th house. So communicating clearly with this person person is helping out larger groups of friends that you're a part of and is helping out your entire friend group and your larger like groups that you're both a part of. Then on the ninth, there is a full moon in your Aries ninth house. Now full moons are endings, they're high points, they're celebrations. And this one's really positive. It's opposite Venus and it has some lovely aspects. So this looks like a high point of celebrating something financially for you where you're like, yay, I made it. This happened. Let me treat myself. It's a great day to treat yourself on the ninth. And from the ninth to the 15th, Mars in your fourth house will be squaring Neptune in your fourth house. So you could find that there's some issues at home that you've been addressing and dealing with, renovations, issues with family, conflict at home, and your lack of clarity or your confusion with the situation is making it more difficult. So you might be the one that is not on the same page or could be confused or could be deceptive, but something about who you are not being clear is making this conflict at home a little bit more challenging. Then on the 11th, a lot of things start happening in your Libra 8th house of shared finances and investing. Mercury moves into Libra on the 8th, showing more communication and thought is going into finances. And from the 11th to the 14th, the Sun and Venus in your 8th house are showing that you're getting more attention and attracting more both responsibility but also abundance into your investments. And they're trining Saturn in your 12th house. So this is really supporting your mental health and you are really re well prepared and ready for this. And on the 17th to the 9th, they're trying Mars in your fourth house. So the effort that you're working out with your family or living situation is actually being helped out by this income, by this investing journey, and that's helping tie some loose ends up. And from the 19th to the 26th, that entire time, the sun is conjunct Venus, first in your eighth house of investing, then it moves into your Scorpio ninth house of foreign travel and higher education to attract things into that area of your life. But from the 19th to the 20th, the sun and Venus will be squaring Pluto in your 11th house. So you might find that you feel manipulated or like there's a power struggle with a large group of people who might want a part of your fortune. On the 23rd, the sun and Venus then move into your Scorpio ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. And what you're attracting and what you're getting attention for could turn more towards traveling abroad, could be towards a degree, but likely seems like you are really embarking on some really dream travel plans because on the 25th there is a solar eclipse in your Scorpio ninth house. Now solar eclipses are huge new beginnings. They're catalyst events on that day that play out over the next six months and this one is in the area of life around foreign long distance travel, international relations, or higher education. Now this one is on the south node which involves letting go or decreasing. So it might be that for example you give up where you live and now you're becoming nomadic and traveling the world 
could be that you give up a degree and instead become like traveling everywhere, but you're giving up something substantial and decreasing this area of your life and instead having a new beginning in it in a different way. Then on the 28th, Jupiter is re-entering your Pisces first house. So Jupiter was in your first house of self from the first to the fifth from January until May, showing that spotlight was on you and personal growth was going really, really well for the first five months. Now Jupiter's re-entering it, so you're focusing a lot more on yourself and reprioritizing personal growth and abundance. Kind of seems like you're like, fuck this shit, I'm gonna travel the world and do my thing. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting from this combination. And on the 30th, Mercury is entering your Scorpio ninth house. So logistics, planning, and communication about traveling abroad could further increase. And we end the month on the 30th with Mars stationing retrograde in your Gemini fourth house. Now Mars retrograde shows having to go back and rethink effort, rethink your efforts, rethink how you got shit done, kind of go back and revise the conflict that could have occurred. And with it in your fourth house of living situation and family, you might have had some developments around where you live or your family and now you're like, shit, I gotta go back and rethink this and resolve this conflict that I already thought I worked over. So if you have any thoughts, any predictions, or anything you want to share about what's coming up for you this month, feel free to leave that down below. We'd love to hear from you in the comments. So the tarot card that we have for Pisces Risings for this October is the Eight of Pentacles Reversed. So the Eight of Pentacles generally, I mean, I know this card well because it deals with the first decan of Virgo, which is where my son is. Um, usually this upright shows that you are humble, little by little building something that works out, that you're very careful, that you have all the precise things and that you worked very hard and were rewarded. With this upright, I, I'm sorry, with this inverted, it usually shows being careless or hasty, like you might realize, shit, I gotta go back because I was careless with the way that I dealt with my home situation. So I think that that might be the Mars retrograde for you is like, shit, I did all that impulsively, I need to go back and fix that because uh, I was not careful. <laughs> I hope that a lot of this is welcome news or fits in with your plans for this October already. If you haven't already, I would love to have you subscribe. I see a lot of you have not subscribed yet and I would love to have you join the, um, I think we agreed on marinara sauce as our name. I don't know, I'm okay with it if you're okay with it. Anyway, take care and I will see you in the next one. Oh.